Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well. How about a bonus upload to get us that much closer to tonight's live stream? We had a little live stream that I did from the Sasquatch Fest. Great time. Had a great time with Neck. Uh, we got to meet Robert Bartholomew, um, who is a... Bigfoot researcher, paranormal researcher from upstate New York. Uh, really nice, really nice guy. Um, blew my mind that, you know, you, you'd think... I've heard stories that he wasn't. I heard stories that he was kind of just kind of off a little bit. But wow, just really genuine person. Um, great time, great people, beautiful day. Had a blast. Anyway, we got our live stream at midnight tonight. Looking forward to seeing you all there. But I've got this bonus that I want to share with you now. Before we get into it, though, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go and they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's bonus, shall we? Today's first encounter brings us to the state of Washington. I had an encounter with a dog man while conducting Sasquatch research up near Mount Rainier. I was never intimidated by the idea of crossing paths with a Sasquatch, but I'm confident that many others will agree that a run-in with a dog man is an entirely different story. I've always been interested in Sasquatch ever since I was a kid and saw that famous Patterson-Gilman footage. When I saw that, it was as if it brought life to a brand new person sparking a passion that I had never felt before. I lived just outside of Seattle at the time, and on the weekends I would beg my parents to take me into the national park so I could search for footprints. I should mention I've seen Sasquatch more than once, but it's always been at a great distance. I've never been close enough to one to make out facial features. That's why I think it's more interesting that I encountered a dogman, a even rarer creature, up close. It was around the beginning of summer of 2005 when I decided to head out on a solo expedition. I usually went with a friend or two, but both guys who were interested in the subject were busy on this particular occasion. I didn't always do things this way, but I remember it had been a while since I went camping, so I decided to go all out and go on a backpacking excursion that took me on something like a 10-mile journey. I always like to take my time with those kinds of journeys because I'm a firm believer that this is a subject you have to be more patient with than other things. Some people might think I'm loony for saying this, but I don't think you can expect to do good Sasquatch investigation while you have frantic energy. I do think that this species can sense that sort of thing. Now that's just my opinion. I've been doing this stuff for years now, and it's constantly been the case where I've found tracks and other signs of their present when I'm feeling centered. Of course, it could just be because my awareness has improved. When I'm centered, therefore, I notice more of my surroundings than otherwise. It was the second night of my hike and the sky was beautiful, but I decided to take my chances with unforeseen bad weather and removed the rain guard from the top of my tent. I've been asleep for some time, although I'm not sure how long, and was awoken by a sound of these 
unordinary breaths that seemed to be coming from somewhere very close to my tent. The breathing was raspy, that I got the impression whatever was responsible for them was very sick. Possibly on the verge of death, because it didn't sound like any animal I had ever heard before. I, of course, speculated whether it was a Sasquatch that was snooping around my camp. The area I was in is known for frequent activity, so I got pretty excited. A bit nervous, but excited nonetheless. I continued to lie there on my back as still as possible, listening to everything that was going on outside the wall of my fabric shelter. I could hear it sniffing the little area where I had built a fire to cook my freeze-dried food. I was quite intrigued until I watched the silhouette of a gigantic hand run its fingers along the outer wall of my tent. The moonlight was just enough to provide me with a visual shape of its hand. Now I've always believed Sasquatch to be potentially dangerous. If in a position that it felt threatened, but I quickly realized this was no Sasquatch. On the tips of the fingers, there were long nails. Nails that were too long to be considered fingernails. They were claws. When it lightly brushed its claws against the fabric, the animal must have been in a lying down position. Because soon after that, I could see a silhouette of the figure rise and peek over the top of the tent. Now, since there was no rain guard on, I got a damn good look at this thing's face. Even though it was dark outside... My vision had adjusted enough to see the whites of its eyes and the bright white and yellow teeth that lined the extensive snout. I watched those jaws open wide and let this very sick sounding inhales and exhales. It was at that moment I realized I was terrified. I don't think I could have moved even if I tried. This dog man looked evil, sinister, and predatory. I was convinced that I was a goner. It seemed like a split second that it would lunge through the screen of the tent and shred me to pieces. I couldn't tell you how long we stood there and stared at each other, but it felt like it was going on forever, and I held my breath the entire time, bracing myself for the incoming agony. Suddenly its head swiveled in a different direction, and it instantly moved out of sight. It had to have rapidly left the area because I never heard another peep from it. I continued to lie there, wide-eyed as ever, staring up at the screen of the tent until the sky lit up. This may surprise some of you, but I did end up completing the hike within the next two days and even proceeded to continue my investigation. The only difference was that I started keeping an eye out for something other than Sasquatch. I believe I was able to find peace with what happened since I was inches away from the beast and wasn't attacked. I've told my friends and other investigators what had happened that night, and they tend to ask me if I'm certain I wasn't dreaming. Imagine that. We're talking about people who conduct regular Sasquatch research that treated me as if I was delusional. But it's not everyone, only a select few. But I think it serves as a fine example of how people ridicule each other even amongst the believer community. Today's second encounter. I can't say for certain what it was that I saw back in the late 80s, but whatever it was, it sparked my passion for cryptozoology and the unexplained phenomena. I was 20 years old at the time and lived in Lance, Michigan. Lance is an extremely small town that currently has a population of just over 2,000. Everyone who lives there knows there's not a whole lot going on. It was spring, and we had just opened the local golf course for the season, which is where I worked at the time. I did all kinds of things to keep the place running smoothly, but it was one evening while I was driving the Kubota that I saw something I'll never forget. I was riding the vehicle out on the driving range when suddenly this large, funny-looking animal emerged from the nearby thicket, carrying a mangled, bloody carcass. I'm pretty sure I was able to make out hooves, so that makes me think it was probably some land animal such as a deer or a goat. After the strange creature walked a few yards out into the driving range, it dropped the carcass from its jaws and began shifting its head in all directions. 
The way it moved made me feel as though it thought another predator was nearby and might come and try to steal its dinner. It looked in my direction a couple occasions, but I suppose I was too far away to be a concern. I was so stunned by the sight of this thing that I stepped on the brakes to observe it. I turned around to see there was still another golfer using the driving range, and it was plain to see that he also stopped what he was doing due to the sight of the creature. I watched the golfer take a few steps forward from his tee so he could get a better look at this thing. But even from his distance, the sight of the creature was pretty intimidating. Prevent him to want to get any closer. I was essentially in the middle of the creature and the golfer, and even though I had a steel cage around me, something was telling me that I wasn't as safe as I thought I was. The longer I stared at this creature, the more I realized how dangerous looking it was. Its long snout was full of razor-sharp teeth, large claws extended from strangely shaped hands, and I could make out a very prominent muscle definition. The thing that immediately caused me to see that this was no ordinary animal was the fact that it was walking on two legs. It doesn't physically make that much sense because the legs had the shape of a dog's, the way they're bent differently at the knees than ours. If you've ever seen how the legs of a demons are often depicted, that's how this looked. Only with feet or paws instead of hooves. Even though the lower body was different, the upper body was very similar to a muscular human aside of the head and hands. Its body language was different than anything I've ever seen before, man or animal. There was something about its movements that almost made me feel as though it was from a different dimension. I know that sounds strange, but I can't think of any other way to express the odd behavior. It just didn't align with the rest of the environment. Another thing that I thought was how strange it perceived the driving range as a safe place to munch on its kill. I would never expect for it to perceive any open area was an appropriate place to feed. As I sat inside the caged vehicle, I continued to mentally slap myself, trying to come to terms with what I was staring at. By the time I looked back at the golfer, he was already gone, leaving me entirely alone with this large predator and its carcass. For obvious reasons, I wanted to turn that vehicle around, but the way the creature occasionally would glance at me, my instincts told me there was a good chance it would follow me. And if it did follow me, who knew what unexpected innocent bystander I might have accidentally lured to it. It got to the point where I felt like I had been watching this creature eat the bloody meat for an eternity, motivating me to try my luck and start driving. The Kubota back to the shed. It was when I began to turn the vehicle that something from the opposite direction seemed to capture the creature's attention. I watched as it stood up as tall as it could, and it perked its head up and looked towards the woods, then finally stepped in front of its prey, seemingly blocking it from view. That was when I felt I could get a good view and see how tall this thing really was. It was about seven to eight feet tall. So I was slowly turning away when out of nowhere the creature sprinted towards the same section of woods it had just came out of. Whatever it was running toward concerned it so much that it left its prey behind. What I initially thought was that there was something in the woods that had it worried enough to cause it to head in the same direction. However, the way it ran towards those woods left me believing that there was competition or it recognized another means of prey. Of course, it's something I will never know and still to this day have trouble accepting what I saw. The sight was so out of this world that I don't think I'll ever fully accept it. I made it safely back to the garage, parked the vehicle, and went home. I mentioned to my manager that there was a strange animal out on the driving range, but I didn't get too detailed on the notion that it looked like a monster. All I said was it looked like some sort of large dog and that it might be dangerous. So he should probably consider calling animal control or something. I did return to work the following day, and the mangled carcass was gone. Today's third dogman encounter brings us to Idaho. 
I'm not even 100% positive that what I saw back in 2010 was a dog man, but there's nothing else I can think to categorize it as is. It happened in Idaho in a picturesque vacation town of McCall. I was staying at my buddy's summer house. We had brought a few girls and were spending the majority of the days lying around in inner tubes in this very beautiful crystal clear lake that was a few miles from where we were staying. I will have to admit we were all pretty drunk by the time of the incident occurred, which might have added to the excitement of the whole thing. But please don't be one of those skeptics that claim alcohol consumption manages to make you hallucinate. That's one of the most ridiculous ideas I've ever heard and it drives me bananas. Fortunately, all five of us were near the middle of the surprisingly deep lake when one of the weirdest looking animals I've ever seen appeared along the shore. It was so demented looking that my initial assumption was that we were staring at a human wearing professional special effects makeup. I know that sounds stupid, but at the time, I had a very hard time attributing the look of an animal to anything I knew of. It really was the most random thing ever. We were all pretty speechless once we laid eyes on this animal that was clearly focused on us. It was tall and lanky, and I got the impression that it was malnourished, which made the whole sighting a lot creepier because I couldn't help but feel as though it wanted to eat one of us. Its fur was dark gray. I guess you would refer to it as charcoal, although its snout wasn't as protruding as what you typically see on a wolf. It stuck out far enough to reveal rows of sharp teeth. As it walked back and forth on two legs near the edge of the lake, it made this faint noise that reminded me a lot of a small child's whines. And there was something about the way it moved that reminded me of a human. Although the proportions were very different from any human. What is that? One of the girls muttered with a tone that showed she was totally creeped out. I couldn't blame her. It felt like there were only a few yards of water that separated us from what could only be described as a real-life monster. Fortunately, the water was pretty warm. Otherwise, we probably would have froze to death while waiting for the animal to move on. We had brought a cooler full of beer and other beverages, and the animal stayed pretty close to it. Maybe it assumed the object belonged to us, and that we would probably return to it. It didn't do anything other than pace near the large red cooler, keeping its eyes focused on us. If it had at least searched the shoreline or surveyed nearby the ground for anything edible, I might have had a different perception of the whole thing, but no, all it seemed to want to do was stare at us and think of a way to get to us. I suppose for whatever reason, it didn't want to get into the water. If it had wanted to, there's no question that that animal could have made its way out to us and dragged one of us back to shore. Even though it was lanky, its bones appeared to be thick, and it looked as though it was capable of ensuing damage onto any other living organism if it felt necessary. I recall how one of the girls speculated that it must have been some kind of bear. Apparently, they thought bears walk on two legs for long periods of time. At that time, I thought it was a pretty ridiculous thing to say. Should we paddle to the other side? My buddy asked the group. His voice was shaky. It's intriguing to think about the psychological effect this incident had on everyone. Though nobody was saying it aloud, it was as if all of us silently agreed that we were going to die. No, let's just stay in the water, I said. At least until whatever that thing is gone. This is probably going to make me sound like an awful person, but being the teenager that I was, I remember wishing that other people would just show up and serve as decoys for this predator. But the area was far too secluded. Nobody else ever came. It's a werewolf, one of the girls whispered. I mean, what the hell else does it look like? Everyone else remained silent. Nobody could argue her theory, and I still can't. After all, it truly did resemble half man, half beast. Sometimes the dogman would wander off towards the woods, only to quickly return and continue staring at us. 
It stayed in the middle of that small lake for an hour or two until it finally left. Even after the animal was no longer visible, we decided to stay in the water for another 10 to 15 minutes. With each of us focused on different directions so we could get a better judge of where it was nowhere near. Thankfully, we had parked our car nearby so we could easily transport the cooler to the lake shore still. We had to drive a considerable distance through the woods and not a single second went by where I wasn't anticipating an ambush. There was something about that animal that made me suspect it wouldn't hesitate to pounce on a vehicle if provided the right opportunity. Sometimes I tell people about what we saw at that lake that day. But you probably suspect nobody believed us. They assume we just saw something that was unhealthy, thus altering its appearance and causing us to think we saw something else. All right, folks. Cannot wait till tonight's live stream. The Literally, the pinnacle of my week is Saturday night. I love it. I love hanging out with you guys. I love having a blast. I love sharing encounters, talking about what movie, songs, You name it, we talk about it. And uh, we have a lot of fun. Guys, you are what makes this channel so special. And every time I say it, I mean it. I I don't say it just to say it. I say it because it's true. I say it because it's my way of giving back to you guys. And uh, without you, this channel would be nothing. Your input your ideas, your words help this channel grow and go. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. God bless you all.